What's up everyone, Callum from Westwood Table Soccer here and welcome to a one-off special tutorial type video about painting stripes. Now, we're working on the perfect frame for this at the moment. Um, we're not doing a series on it, we're just working on it off camera, but I thought I'd use it because it gives me a great, great chance to show you guys um, something that I get asked about quite a lot and it is the painting of stripes. At the moment we are working on a Stoke City frame, now obviously famous for their red and white striped kits. There's a couple of hooped ones in there as well, back from the early days, but we are looking mainly at the painting of stripes. Now the first thing to think about when we talk about painting stripes, same as when we're painting hoops, is all about that color balance. So let's take a little chance now and let's show you guys some stripe work that's been done. So here you can see then four kits with four slightly different stripe patterns on them. Now, with all of these, we paint them all in exactly the same way. Now, we never go straight for a full stripe in one go. So with all these, same as we do with all the others, we always frame our stripes out with the outer boundaries of what we're going to paint, and then we fill in the gaps. Um, so the top left then is a, is a thinner stripe that we've got there. Oh, just to point out, actually, none of these are 100% finished, so they do still have, like, little detailing bits to put on, which will clean up a lot of the collar lines. I mean, the one in the bottom middle there, his collar line will be nice and crisp when it's done. But the top left then is a smaller, thinner stripe. Um, it's an older style kit. The actual kit has got about six stripes going across the front of it, but we've only gone with four, again, just to get that color balance. The middle one is a three stripe kit um, with the tie collar, so you need to get that color balance of the three stripes combined with at least two middle white ones and then the outer edge whites um, should be equal sizes really to the red stripes that you've painted in the middle. We've then got a slightly more modern kit. Now this is one that's got the central stripe being white. Um, so it's like a three white stripes, two reds, but the outer boundaries of the front of the shirt are red and then the front of the sleeves, um, the under army section is red as well, which gives it that more red look than the one um, that's on the far left. And the very bottom one is quite a modern kit. Um, I think it's like a 1981. It's got the Umbro um, taping up the side there. But it's another four stripe kit. Two main stripes up the front and then the two on the edge come up the sort of side and just across the front of the shirt. But that's how they look when they're done. So let's have a little look in depth now as we start to paint a stripe kit from the beginning. So the first thing to notice uh, about this kit is it's going to have a it's got a red cuff line um, or sleeve line here. So we're just going to pop that in first. Size wise, don't want it to be too big. You don't want it to look massive. Um, it don't want to take up too much of the shirt. So just bringing that paint around, trying to keep an even size all the way around. Trying to make sure that I don't keep moving it out of shot of the camera, which is something that I've found that I do quite a lot. Don't really realise how much I move my figures around until I watch, until I'm trying to film myself painting. Um, I slide them around everywhere. Some guys like to use, um, like take the players out of the bases to paint them and use like bulldog clips and stuff. Um, I've never liked it. I like having the, the base in my fingers. It's just, it just gives me a connection to the player. I can move it exactly where I want to move it um, on any surface of the round. Um, but yeah, so I know some people will take them out of the bases to paint them. Uh, the only time these will ever come out of the base is when I do the boots, just to make sure I don't get any paint on the bait, on the disc. Um, it's the last thing you want to be doing, really. Um, what will probably happen is when I'm actually painting the stripes, I probably won't say a lot, so I apologise. It'll be quite quiet because I don't, I don't really know that I'm doing it, but I don't breathe very much when I'm painting something that's got to be dead straight. Um, I consider myself to be like a sniper, um, and I don't breathe when I'm working. So with this one, um, it's a two red stripes going up there and then it's going to have some coming out the side that stop before they get to the top it's quite a modern um stoke shirt and then it's got some red that comes up over the sleeves as well 
Um, again, so when I'm doing this, I probably will be quite quiet. I'm just going to give my brush a little, little clean off because the paint does, uh, the paint does dry on the end, and you end up with quite a thick end of the brush. Um, going with our trusty brush that we use for everything. Um, again, nothing massively special about it. It's a lot smaller than it was when I first got it. Um, but yeah, so for a little bit, I'm going to apologise. It's going to be really, really quiet because when I'm painting stripes, especially. Um, I just don't talk. notice with this one and um, down at the bottom of the shirt there I started a little bit up from the shirt and the reason for that is you can't really see it on the camera but on a Santiago figure especially the shirt dips in there um, quite a lot and what can happen if you start with um, at the bottom what can happen is when you hit that dip it can kick you out on your stripe painting so usually what I'll do is I'll fire that middle one up um, the first one and then all I'm looking for really is sort of a realistic distance between the two lines um, to create my stripe because there's going to be a white gap in the middle about the same as this and then another red um, and then on the edge they're going to come up just in here. But yeah, so the reason I left that bit at the bottom down here is just because it dips in a little bit more than the rest of the shirt. So once I've got that sort of line there as a guide, I can line it up. just in there. So now I've got my first frame area uh, out. I'm just gonna bring it across straight across the bottom of the short. So we're trying to get a nice crisp line here before I try and fill it in. So now I've got my full frame around that first red stripe. And all we're gonna do, nice and easy, with a little bit more paint on the brush, is just nice and carefully fill it in. You don't wanna go gung-ho here, because you can, it is possible to go outside the lines. Um, and obviously you don't, you don't want to do that because you've just created your nice straight boundary what you don't want to do is go smashing out of it by putting too much paint on the brush but yeah so there you go there you can see the first of the stripes on this shirt um, and there's gonna be like I say another one the same on the other side which will show you I'll paint the whole fish whole shirt it might be a fairly long piece of video um, but hopefully it's going to be useful to you guys that have got the brushes out or even if you haven't got the brushes out and you're just you know you're just here for some paint work this is what we're working on at the moment it's stoke city it's about i don't know 2000 and something kit um it's made by lecoq sportif um unsurprisingly it's got britannia on it um but yeah so what we're going to do we're going to bring that last one up there again just going to give my brush a little clean you can't hear it but that's just me tapping on the side of the jar. Sometimes you'll hear that quite a lot when I'm painting. So I'm going to do the same again. Again, apologies if it goes quiet, but I'm just going to bring the second uh, line up here, trying to keep this space in the middle the same as this space that we've already created.
notice with this one, when I framed out the bottom, I didn't have to start my second stripe halfway up. And there's not such a big indent in the shirt uh, on that side. So again, we brought it up to the top there. You hopefully we've got a pretty much the same size spaces uh, in between the stripes, which is what we're looking for. And again, now all we're going to do is just fill in that gap just in here. Hopefully, I'm not off camera. No, I'm not good. I've managed to do pretty well there. Trying to keep my figure in one place. And then there you go. So there's the two main stripes on the front of the shirt finished. I've got a squeaky chair as well. It's really irritating every time I move. Right, it squeaks, so I have to try and stay really still, else it, uh, it probably comes up really clearly on a, on a phone mic. Um, so now what we need to do is to bring the sort of underarm uh, stripes up, and they don't come up as high, they probably only come to, let me just get that on the camera for you, probably only come to like here, and they spike down, and then go underneath the sleeve, so... Again, I, I can't, I tried, I've tried talking during stripes, it just doesn't happen because I do weird things with my breathing. Um, obviously, I advise you guys to breathe when you paint, if you can. Um, not breathing when you paint can be fatal. Um, but yeah, so, the only thing I can liken it to, and I'm, I'm nothing like it, I'm not, a, you know, it's not a sniper thing, but the way they would hold their breath and control their heartbeats is a lot more in-depth than what I would do. But just something I've noticed that I've, I do when I paint is that I don't breathe when I'm doing certain bits. Um, and it just really helps with the steady hand, helps with the controls, the concentration thing. Um, but yeah, so, you know, some of you guys might find yourself doing it. It's not something I do on purpose. It's just something that I've noticed the longer and longer I've painted, the more and more time I've spent doing it. Um, is Yeah, it's just something that I do. So let's bring these... Let's bring these stripes up. And again, we're looking for an equal distance, ideally, between the white and the red in this outside area. So cool. So you can see in there, um, this stripe up here has just been brought in um, just slightly up um, onto the shirt because what's going to happen, there's going to be a red one that tracks around here and goes all the way up to the collar. Um, but yeah, so that's how that one goes. Um, as for painting the underarm area, um, I go across the bottom of the shorts first just to keep that line straight. And then I kind of just use the side of the brush and try and drag straight down. There's an underneath the arms of um, all the figures. I mean, you'll see it on you if you've got figures in front of you. But there's like a where it's been in the mold. There's a line that runs up the whole player um, of plastic. So if you can try it, that's really, really good for doing underarm stripes. You just kind of try and follow that down. So it gives you a nice clean line and a nice divide between the front and the back of the shirt. And it allows you to get a nice stripe in there. So I try and bring my my stripe along the bottom of the shirt here um, but I work back from my first line and then I'll hit that um, sort of ridge in the shirt where it's been moulded so that gives me that sort of nice distance of of stripe in there. So we're doing the same on the other side and then we'll come around to the ones on the outside.
So there you go, exactly the same on the other side. So hopefully, which I'm actually quite impressed about that I've done, is on video, um, live, I've actually managed to create quite an even shirt. Um, you'd be surprised the amount of times you get this wrong, uh, even I've been painting, like I say, for probably about 20 years since I first started painting Sputio. But yeah, so I still make mistakes, so don't worry if you make mistakes, it's not a massive issue. But yeah, so I'm glad I've actually managed to get that one pretty much uh, spot on. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring my line up, um, my stripe on the sleeve, going to bring it across and that'll be this shirt done, ready to go. trying to leave white at the top and um, it's a white collar so if I can leave it then that's what I'll do um, just in there And then because it's a, a collar shirt layer, a collar line, you can just see that the top of the stripe is just um, got a curve in it. So it just makes it follow that line around the top of the shirt a little bit better. And then again, as always, just fill in the gaps. Be careful here though, again, because I mentioned that ridge line before. Um, that ridge line can actually, um, especially on sleeves, cause an issue with some um, design marks. If you catch the wrong part of it, it can flick your bristles out on your brush um, and it will cause you to put paint in the wrong place, especially if you've got a loaded, like quite a loaded brush. So just be aware of it when you're painting that you don't hit it in the wrong, the wrong area because it will, it's ruined many a shirt, this little line here. But yeah, you guys, you might not be able to see it on camera. Um, it's quite difficult to show. I'm trying to figure out a way of making it visible, but there's a line, like a mold line that runs all the way up the outside of the figure. Sometimes they're more pronounced um, on some figures than others. I don't know if you guys probably just about see it just here on this guy. Um, so that's the line I'm talking about. You can really see it quite clear on his leg there. Um, but yeah, so that's the sort of line that runs up pretty much right up the center of every figure. So on the underarm bit, it's a great help when you're doing stripes on the underarm because it will help you stop short on the sleeve. Again, it can be a really good help on some designs, but when you're doing a stripe that runs uh, pretty much right up the outside of the shirt, if you do catch it wrong with a loaded brush, um, it will throw you off. So there's another little tip there. Just gonna clean my brush again one more time before I do this last stripe. And then obviously, the back of the shirt works exactly the same way as the front, so I won't show you guys that, but if you are painting the back of the shirt, it does work in exactly the same way. Cool, so there you go then, the stripe is coming up the outside there. The even stripe on the front of the shirt, very, very impressed actually with how I managed to get that done. But hopefully that's gonna help some of you guys out with your stripes. Um, yeah, I'm pleased with how that went. Hopefully uh, it's helped some of you guys out. But uh, yeah, that's it. Here we go then, that is the tutorial of how to, or at least how I, paint stripes and I paint Sputio teams. I had the ideal frame for it, so it seemed like the perfect opportunity to do it. Um, I've kind of been over in the Wolves episode one, 
uh, how to paint hoops, but I will do a specific um, hoops tutorial when uh, I, you know, when time gives me the opportunity or when a kit gives me the opportunity to give you a, give you guys a hoop kit. There was one in here, but I'd kind of already done it and I was waiting for my new, my new toy, my new tripod to arrive, which has helped me out massively there. We've been able to get my phone into position to be able to show you some really good close up painting shots. Um, hope you enjoyed it. So thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you are new, leave a like on the video and any questions, um, you've got for me put in the comments or you can get hold of us uh, on Twitter which will be up here or you can email us on the email address down the bottom there. So thank you very much for watching, see you later.